Good evening. My name is Joseph. Tonight I will be attempting to replicate and duplicate my grandmother's secret garlic chicken recipe. It's been a top secret to me for, for almost 26, 27 years of my life. I've never known what the recipe is. I've been grown to love this chicken and this garlic masterpiece. Never knew what the recipe was. Tonight we're going to try to duplicate it, duplicate the flavor and the taste this evening. Today is June 3rd, 2013. Uh, time on deck is approximately quarter after 7, 7.15. Possibly. Earlier on this, uh, this afternoon, I did a lot of the prep work around uh, 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon. I took about two eggs, uh, beat them up so they have the, uh, the yolks all beat up so they have a nice uh, egg wash. I uh, got some uh, all-purpose flour egg. Now the flour, when it comes out of the package, it always has uh, lumps, so it's all usually very lumpy. I went ahead and took the flour with a fork, you know, or a, uh, you know, kind of like a colander, so to speak, or a strainer. You can strain out all the, uh, all the lumps and everything, because when you're making something with flour, you want a nice smooth texture. You know, you don't want anything lumpy or any clumps going into your, into your food. So your all-purpose flour, you have your egg wash, and then you have the uh, butter. Now this is, my grandmother always used to use a lot of butter. Uh, for about three or four different people, you know, she would probably use maybe about a stick and a half, maybe two sticks. My grandmother's biggest thing was butter. I think that's what the cereal recipe was. Um, we have butter here. We also have mixed in with the butter. You know, you, the butter has a texture, obviously, because I've mixed in some stuff with it. We've mixed in uh, some garlic powder. Uh, some garlic bread sprinkle. And let me grab this from the refrigerator real quick and show you what else I used. Also used some minced garlic as well. Now I'm not too sure how this recipe is going to turn out, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Okay. The uh the star of the show is right here. And this is very important. Uh, when you go to a store you can either use thick cut or lean cut or thin cut, uh, we want to try to go with the, the thin thin cut. That's what you want to try to use. Okay. If you do get the thick cut chicken or chicken breast, then you want to be able to go ahead and cut it in half or at least, you know, get yourself a good lean uh, cut. That way you have more put on the pan, uh, more uh, more space, get that flavor. Okay. Uh, what you want to do is, you don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be Purdue. You can get a boneless, skinless chicken breast. That's what you want to get. It has to be boneless and has to be skinless. Uh, these are chicken breast tenderloins. Okay, like I said, you can't tell. These are pretty thin cut. Um, it's about a pound and a quarter. All right, pound and a quarter. Uh, you get more bang for your buck. Uh, it's about five bucks a pound. Local Walmart. Like I said, you don't have to go Purdue. But, uh, you know, if you can get the thin, the leaner cut, that would probably work best. Over here, we have your regular, uh, you know, stainless steel pan. All right. Pretty big pan that I've gotten for this, uh, for this dish. That way I can maybe put, like, one or two pieces on here. And then this, this is my grandmother's pan, all right? Two different models here. Uh, we're going cast iron, all right? Stainless steel versus cast iron. Uh, we're going to see which one uh, tastes better, you know. I'm not going to say uh, better or worse, but we're going to try to do two different models and see what kind of a uh, result we get. So basically what the idea is, these have been chilling in the refrigerator all day. Um, in case this doesn't go right, we also have another batch, another pound and a quarter sitting in the freezer. Um, what you want to do is take, uh, we're going to take a piece or two, right? We're going to dip it in the egg wash, okay? 
uh, both sides, and then roll it around, give it a flour bath, so to speak, and then bring it to the pan. Before we bring it to the two pans, we want to go. To, we want to go ahead and bring this and throw this on the pans. All right. We want to heat up the pans, get the butter and the garlic mixed in there. That way, when we get ready to throw the chicken on, we'll have a nice flavor, nice aroma going on. So this is the prep work. Put this into the two pans over there. That way, you have the the, the fat and the garlic mixed in together. That way, you know, there'll be a good flavor, so a good aromas going. That way you have something to cook the chicken in. It'll baste it, and it'll get a good, nice, nice coating when it's cooking. So, chicken into the, uh, the egg wash. Flour bath, both sides. Bring it here. We're going to do about one here, one here. Cook through them for maybe about a minute or two. Uh, apparently, garlic, garlic chicken can, it's very good when done properly, but according to what I've heard, it can be messed up or go bad very easily. So we're going to put one piece here, one piece here for the test run, and we're going to try it out. So the, uh, the test plate, which is empty right now, is empty. So when we come back and see part two, there should be two pieces of chicken right here, left to right, stainless steel versus cast iron, and we'll see if the chicken's been cooked thoroughly, been cooked properly, and we'll see if the, uh, the flavor is there. Also, on a side note, um, it's also been brought to my attention that if you have enough of the fat and the garlic still in the pans, you can also use that as a sort of a gravy as well. So. This is the documentary of the garlic chicken reproduction of my grandmother's classic style secret recipe. We're going to go ahead and give it a go. So, we're going to go ahead and give it a go, and we'll uh, see you when I come back. We'll take a look at the chicken.